Welcome everybody to this project. This is what we're going to be building. This is used in almost every single interview about front end. And of course, it is a unique trick that every single firm and single website use. It's something very amazing. This is what we're going to be doing today. Now, of course, probably you have seen the introduction about the AI website. This is what's coming next. If you have not watched this video right over here. And today we are going to see this amazing little unique trick animation, trick animation, and I hope you do like it and enjoy, and it's going to be very useful for you. Let's go. Okay, welcome everyone. We are in Visual Studio Code. Now, let's actually go and create this burger menu. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say npx, create, react, app, and I'm gonna go with burger. I'm just gonna go simply burger. Upon entering, of course, if you want to use this npx, you have to have node installed. So this is something that I'm gonna say. After that, a lot of things are just going to start happening over here. And finally, you're going to see happy hacking right down here and you know that you're ready to go. So now I'm going to actually wait for it and see again when it's done. All right, we are here in burger and we actually got this ready. So let's go to burger here and we have a couple of things we want to delete. So the first thing is app test and here we go. Logo for the logo by sub test and now I just need to do some cleaning just so we can compile it. I'm going to remove everything from index.css as well. App.js, I'm going to remove the logo because it's deleted. I'm going to remove this. I think that's right. And here I'm going to remove everything as well. Now we want to be sure that we can build this. So let's say npm and then start and see if this is actually going to work starting the development server and here you can see that we have compiled successfully and let me just bring this window for you i have no idea why again there we go all right all right boom so it is compiling successfully now let's actually go and try to do the burger menu as well. um i think i cannot gonna commit it. just that uh, i don't have anywhere to commit it to so I don't know why it's saying it should be. But anyway, anyway. All right, let's not bother with it. Good. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to app CSS. And here I'm going to say dot app. Or at least I think it was dot app. Yeah, there we go. And I want to do a couple of things. So the first one is going to be text align center. Then I'm going to go padding zero, margin zero, and box sizing for the box. I'm going to do this just so I can set it up properly. And now we are going to go doing the burger menu. Upon doing the burger menu, here I'm just going to create one folder. As a real professional, I'm just gonna call it burger menu. And I can open here and then I'm going to create a couple of things. So in this folder, I'm gonna go with burger menu, so JSX, and burger menu, so CSX. Good. So this is going to be my component. Here I can type R-A-F-C-E. Tab and it's going to create an automatic component for me. Oops. There we go. So now, now that we have this out of the way, in app.js, I can just call burger tab. It's going to auto complete it. It's going to import it for me. And of course, if here I say hello world, I should see this. So let's bring the window over here again and boom, hello world. You can absolutely see that it's working. So it's actually finding the component. It's actually rendering it on the screen. And now the whole idea is, all right, well, we have this, we have that, but what do we do? Now, I am going to go here on burger menu. And first of all, I'm going to say a state. I'm going to state if it's open or not. In order for me to do that, I'm going to say is open, then set is open. And here I'm just going to go with use state. And at first it's going to be false. Whenever it's actually false, it should be like the three lines that you see. So if I go, it should be like this. And when, when it's ever is actually open, so when a user click on these, these lines, they should transpose into an X, all right? So we're gonna use state false, and here I had to import it. So tab, go, and I'm gonna say false. All right, very good. Now also, I am going to write a function in order to traverse if it's open or it's closed. And this is going to be set open state. It's going to be equal to a function, as we already stated. 
I'm gonna say let reverse opened. I'm gonna show you a very quick way is open, right? So I'm gonna take the is currently is open state and I'm just going to reverse it. So I'm gonna say set is open to reverse open. There you go. Of course, what you can do is just this and skip this check, right? But I think that this is easily readable, so we should be all right. Let's now delete this hello world, and here I'm gonna go with a class name. The class name is going to be done like this. Since here, if I have a certain class name, I'm going to transpose either to an X or to the three lines, right? And that's why I need to have some evaluation here. So first of all, I'm gonna check if, it's, if it is open, right? And if it is, I'm gonna have menu and button. There you go. However, if it is not, I'm gonna say menu button open, right? And actually it's open, but first it's gonna be false. That's why we're gonna have menu button. And if it's not false, we're gonna have menu button open. All right, wonderful. All right, good. So now I'm going to also put a click function onto this div. So I'm gonna say on click, and this is gonna be equal to a function that's gonna be calling set open state, the function that we actually created here. So pretty much it's just going to reverse, reverse. Then I'm gonna create a new div and I'm gonna say class name, menu button burger. That's pretty much it. So that's really all that we are going to do on this part. Now I'm gonna say the burger menu is going to stay on the right over here. And on to the left, I'm gonna open up burger menu. That's it's actually right over here. Boom, there we go. All right. There are a couple of things that we should be doing. And to be honest, uh, this is the app. Uh, how can I make it better? Now, if I make it on a three screen, so if I make it this app being here onto the left and this thing onto the right, uh, I think you're going to see very badly. So that's why I'm just going to leave it like this. What I can do, what I can pop it like this. Uh, it's all right, we're just going to check it. So let's first go and define the body. I want a background color to be a little bit darkish, so I'm gonna say 27, 27, 27. And if I open up now, everything should be, yes, we should be importing it as well. So import, and here I'm gonna say burger CSS, and there you go, there is our color. All right, I think that's all right. I think that's all right because um, we're gonna put it here on the center, I'm not gonna put it in a menu yet. Of course, that's what I'm gonna show you in later videos. But right now, I'm just going to put it here onto the middle, something like this. So let's actually continue. I want the carrot color to be transparent. Now, this is a problem that uh, I really do hate. And uh, that's why I say carrot color to be transparent. I do not want to see it. Uh, if you have actually managed to go to Gmail or to YouTube, you're going to see that this carrot, this is the carrot over here. So that's this thing over here that you're seeing right now. You're seeing it right now on the screen. This. And this thing can, at least now, I see in the past week in YouTube, you can actually click on random elements and this carrot is shown. So it's very bothering for me and that's why I say carrot color transparent. I don't want to see it. Display is gonna be flex, justify content. It's going to be standard center, pretty much what I use all the time. I'm also going to be aligning the items being on the center. And I'm gonna say the min height is going to be 300 view height port. Good. So now what we need to do is to target this menu button right over here. So I'm going to target both menu button and dot menu button open. I'm targeting both because when I'm opening, so when I'm uh, doing this function over here, I do not want to change the whole div. I'm gonna change certain elements, yes, but the whole position is still gonna be relative, display is still gonna be flex. So that's why here I'm targeting both. So I'm gonna go, as I said, position is going to be relative here, display is gonna be flex, standard stuff, since I want to have everything in the center right now, I'm just going to center them. So justify content and align items in the center. Width, I'm gonna give 80 pixels, and height, I'm gonna give 80 pixels as well. Cursor, I want to be pointer, and then I'm gonna give a transition. I'm gonna give one second transition because I like stuff to be a little bit slower. 
but I think that 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 actually works best. I'm gonna give one because as I said, I just like stuff to be a little bit more slowed down, I guess. Also, I'm gonna give it a border. Three pixel solid, and I'm gonna go with white color. Let's actually see now what we have. And you're going to see this menu over here that's pretty much not having anything. And it's not even meant to be in this particular rectangular shape. I just like it this way because I'm gonna put the lines over here, then we're gonna transpose them. And uh, I think it's easily to be seen, right? I think that I like it. So far, I like it quite a lot, 100%, even though it is a bit small. All right, so well, moving on forward now, I'm going to target the menu button burger. So it's gonna be this div over here below. Dot menu button and burger, and this stuff over here, we want to be, these are going to be our lines. So let's actually go with saying the width is going to be 50 pixels, height is going to be 6 pixels. Then I'm going to go with background, it's going to be white again. We have, we're going to have some white lines. Border radius is going to be 5 pixels, so a little bit smoother on the edges. I'm going to give it a box shadow. So a box shadow is always something that you have to play around. I cannot just give you some random elements like, for example, I always choose white color, gray color for, for the text. You know. Um, you, you've seen this uh, in the introduction of the AI site as well. But for box shadow, you can either go to the web, take web kits, or just take a box shadow that you like. So currently I'm going to go 0, 2 pixels, 5 pixels RGBA, and I'll give it a little bit reddish. So something like this I've written down. As you can see, it is a little bit reddish and orangish. I don't know what this color is. No. But if I go now to the this, you're going to see that it's kind of like lighting up a little bit. It, it is looking fine, I like it. But again, you can put it a green, you can put it white. It all depends on the site that you're actually going to have. So it really doesn't matter. Now, I do have, however, this line over here, right? Which is wonderful. However, I want these lines as well. And how are we gonna make these lines? Because currently into the div, I made one line and it is into the middle because we are aligning this, but I want to have one here and one here. So three lines total. What I can do is I can say dot menu button burger before, and you guessed it, I'm gonna do the same thing after. So something like this, right. And now I can actually create lines. First of all, I'm gonna give them zero empty content. I'm gonna give them an absolute position, right? Always be sure that these, when their parents, their parents should have a relative position. Remember this because you're gonna to get to a trouble. Left is gonna be zero, right is going to be zero, and margin left is going to be auto, and margin right, margin right is going to be set to auto as well. This is very important because I'm actually gonna remove it and show you. With 50 pixels and height, 6 pixels, uh, I want them to be the same like this one, right? I do not want them to be different in size. Background is still going to be white. As I said, I just want them to be the same. For border radius, I'm going to give, again, 5 pixels. And for box shadow, I'm just going to copy this and put it over here because, as I said, I'm aiming for the same line. Of course, transition, which I forgot over here, is going to be O, oh, one is ease and out. And I'm gonna copy this transition and put it over here as well. So let's actually see what we have now. And it seems like, control S, right? It seems like we do not have anything. So let's actually see what the problem is now. All right, so far what I do believe are, is that they are actually inside over here. They are inside over here. For some reason, my my video recording stopped. So if if you go here, right, F12, and you're going to see that before and after are actually standing in the same place. So I'm just going to go and translate them, right? I'm going to put after over here, uh, before over here, and after over here, right? So I'm just going to put them up and down on the Y axis. And hopefully, I'm going to see them. Now, of course, I'm going to try to say menu button burger, and I'm going to go with before. Transform, translate on the y axis, and I'm going to be translating with minus 16 pixels. 
I'm going to do the same thing for after. So here I'm just going to copy this, put after override over right here, and here I'm going to translate with 16 pixels. But of course, this time it's going to be plus. So let's actually see now. And boom, it's actually looking very nice. Uh, I do like the glow, probably bluish is going to be a little bit better. But I do like the glow. Now when I want to click, you can see that this class is changing. Menu button open, menu button, right? So here is the interesting part. Why it's changing? Well, we already did the function over here and we are calling it on a onClick event. That is wonderful. And what I need to do now is pretty much to animate it. So how are we going to animate it? Well, if I say menu button and I target the open tag now, so that's going to be menu open button open, just like this, but I'm adding something extra when it's about to be open. Why am I doing it here and not here? Well, because here it is going to be, if I put it in this tag, it is going to resemble the menu button as well. So I want them to have a difference, right? They are the same, so they have the same relative position. I, don't want, I do not want to change this. I do not want to change the display flex. Also, the width and the height shouldn't be changed. The border shouldn't be changed. However, menu button open should have something extra in order to perform this animation. So I'm going to target menu button open and menu button burger. All right? And how am I actually going to do that? Well, I'm going to transform, translate to the X. And I don't know if I should explain this now, what we're trying to do, we'll just show you. Yeah, let's actually write it down and I'm going to show you. Background is going to be transparent and box shadow is going to be none. So now if I go, you're going to see this, right? We placed everything on to the left. You can see onto the left X. So if I click on here, everything is going to the right. If I click back, everything is going to the left side with 50 pixels. Now, what's interesting is that background is transparent over here. I'm going to show you why. If I do remove the background transparent, look when, what happens when I click. Boom. <laughs> so it's kind of like this middle line should be out. We shouldn't see that. So that is why I'm just adding background transparent over here. And now when I actually click, you're going to see that this line is disappearing. However, this is still not good enough. This should be done like that, and we should transpose this like that, right? That's what we should do. All right, and that is what we are going to do next. So let's say menu button, oops, menu button, and then I need to target open tag. Happens only when it's open. Dot menu button burger. Uh, before, let's go. With and I'm going to translate the before line 45 degrees. So let's actually see how this is going to look. Transform, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to rotate by 45 degrees. And I can also translate and put it 35 pixels to minus 35 pixels. How I came up to this, these numbers, well, I'm going to show you. It's just that I played around and I came up. So let's actually see what this is going to do. This is going to look very funny, but boom, there you go. So look how this line now is not going back. Actually, to be fairly honest, everything goes back at first, but then we are rotating at 45 degrees. So if I have something like that, right? You know that 90 degrees over here and 45 is going to be the half. So we are rotating this and making it point right like that, right? So you can see that these here, these are 90 degrees and just in the middle over here is going to be 45 degrees. So that's what I'm going to be rotating. And also, also, why am I actually translating with 35 pixels and minus 35 pixels? Well, I want this to, to come back here, right? And that's why I'm doing it. So currently what I have is just this going down and this going back. <laughs> It's looking very ugly now, but you guessed it. The only thing that's left for me to actually do is to copy it and do the same thing with the after. But this time I'm going to rotate with minus 45 degrees. So let's actually see how this is going to look. Click and it goes right over here. You can see 
So now the only thing that we should be doing is bring this down right over here. So we translate it and we placed it 50 pixels to the left, but I want it to be down over here, right? I want to keep the same angle. I just want to keep it next to this line. And in order for me to do that, I'm just going to remove this minus 35 pixels over here. And let's see how this is going to work now. Boom, there we go. That's pretty much it. This is the animation that we're going to have. And uh, it is a very unique trick that everyone is doing. I mean, pretty much everyone is using nowadays. Click and click. There we go. Super fancy, super easy. Now, as I said, I think that with 0 0.3 seconds and 0 0.5 seconds, everything works a little bit better. It's just that I prefer to get one second because it is for a video and it's look better. But usually, this is what they have, right? Something like this. And I said, as I said, a 0 0.4, 0 0.3, somewhere along those lines are what the firms are actually having. So that's pretty much it. Boom, boom. It's looking very nice, very decent. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, put them down below. This is a little bit tricky, but again, you can play around with it. So let's uh, translate it with 45 pixels and see what happens. And boom. It can... This is actually a very nice effect. Wow, I'm actually very impressed with this. Yeah, I liked it quite a lot, actually. I mean, nobody has this weird X. <laughs> All right, this was actually pretty cool. So you can actually play around, see where this is going to be translating. And uh, yeah, just uh, uh, maybe a question that you might have is why are we translating them 50 pixels to the left and then translating them back to the right? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense when you think about the middle line. When we click, we want to see the middle line going 55, 50 pixels to the left, right? And that's why we're translating this after, because we want to be sure that this line is going to go over here and suddenly disappear. So there we go. That's it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. I hope you like this project. It is something that is asked in every single interview about front end. And yeah, it's just very cool in general. Have a nice one. Bye.